one of the weird and wonderful things about the Gaussian distribution is that the family of Gaussians is preserved under many different operations. In other words, if you start out with a Gaussian and you do something to it, then very often what you end up with is still a Gaussian. A prime example of this is the affine transformation property that we saw, and a couple other examples that we're going to look at are marginalization, conditioning, and summing Gaussian random variables. First, we're going to take a look at marginalization. So we'll do that in this video. So let's say we have some so we'll start out with just a very simple case to get some intuition. Let's say we have some Gaussian random variable here, a multivariate Gaussian with two dimensions. So it's just a, a Gaussian in R2. It turns out that then the coordinates are also Gaussians. They are Gaussian random variables. So let's draw a picture for the, to get the intuition for this. Let me scoot it over here a little bit. So let's draw, let's say we have some Gaussian, and maybe its mean is something like here or something. And it's got all these, or maybe I'll, I'll move the mean up a little bit. So it's got, if I were to draw samples from this distribution, maybe it's something like this. These are supposed to just be samples. So its density is sort of roughly looks something like this. So what this is saying is that if we were to take this distribution and project it, if we were to only look at the first coordinate, let's say this is x1 and this is the x2 coordinate, if we were to only look at the first coordinate, then that would be Gaussian distributed. So if we were to take, so if we took each of these samples, maybe this one, we, we put it down here, we project it there, and this one gets projected here and, and so on, and so we get all these guys projected onto this axis. This is just sort of the, the geometric intuition here. Then this would be Gaussian distributed. That's what this is saying. And similarly, if we projected them onto this axis, then that would also be Gaussian distributed. And this is super easy to prove, actually, right? So let's prove it. Let's take A to be the matrix 1, 0, motivated by thinking of this projection sort of. This, this sort of projection thing. We take A to be this sort of projection matrix. And we just use the affine property. So let's take A. So for the, well, what does the affine property say? Let's remind ourselves of that first. The affine property says that if X is a multivariate Gaussian, then for any matrix A and any vector B, as long as this multiplication and addition makes sense, that AX plus B, so let me say this, x normal with mean mu covariance c implies a x plus b is multivariate normal with mean a mu plus b plus b and covariance a c a transpose that was the affine property and we'll just take our a here to be this and we'll take b to just be zero and then we know that AX plus B by this is Gaussian. And what's AX plus B? AX, I should put maybe transpose here. So think of X as a column vector. Then AX is just X1. And B is 0. So of course, this is just X1. And so by the affine transformation property, we know that X1 is Gaussian. And similarly, if you took this to be 1 and 0, then you could also show that X2 is Gaussian. So this is just a very, very, very simple fact. And let's generalize this a little bit. So let's now think a little more generally. Let's let x be a normal with mean mu and covariance c. And let's decompose x in the following way. Let's take a to be the first k numbers from 1 to n, and let's take b to be k plus 1 to n. So k will be, so b will be the last n minus k numbers. And here k is just some number between 1 and n. So we let x be this multivariate Gaussian. And we're going we're gonna to look at 
the marginal distribution on the first k coordinates of x. And we'd like to show that that is Gaussian. That's what this marginalization property is. So let's write. So let's. So this is a sort of new topic here. So let's. Let's now decompose x into x a, make it a little bigger, and x b. This will simplify our life a little bit. The notation will be much simpler. And here x a is just going to be the first compo the first k components first k coordinates xb is going to be xk to uh, xk plus 1 up to xn so here i didn't say it but i'm thinking of x as being in rn it's a n dimensional multivariate gaussian so x we just decompose it as this sort of block vector type of thing and similarly we can decompose mu as mu a, mu b, that kind of block thing in the same way. And we can also decompose c. So let's decompose while we're decomposing. Let's decompose c as c a a, c a b, c b a, c b b. And here, this is a block matrix. As they say, it's, it's what they call a block matrix. And c a a I won't write out all of them but just to give you the picture C A A is going to be the upper left k by k block of C it's just this upper left block so it's just C 1 1 down to C K 1 over to C 1 K down to C K K where C I J is the I J entry of C Okay, so now we got all of our all of our notation straight, and the result is actually m much simpler to state and prove even than than all this notation. So the result is the following fact. So we have the following fact. Let's call it the marginalization. If I can spell it, marginalization property, and it says that. Under this situation, x a is multivariate normal with mean mu a and covariance c a a. The best possible thing you could hope for. And of course, similarly, well, maybe not obvious, but it turns out that similarly, x b is also multivariate normal and it has mean mu b and covariance matrix c b b, this lower right block. And let's prove this. This is so easy to prove. We, we just have to prove it. So the proof here of this fact, we're just going to use the affine property. Up here, we use the affine property in this simple special case. And actually, in this case, we could have even just used the, the definition of a multivariate Gaussian, the fact that any linear combination is Gaussian. But I wanted to do it this way because we would see how to how to how it generalizes to this this more general case. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take a. What do we want? We want here up before we we projected onto the first coordinate because we wanted to show that the first coordinate was Gaussian. And here what we'd like to do is show that the first k coordinates are Gaussian. So what we're going to do is project onto the first k coordinates. That's all we're going to do. And how do we do that? Well, we just take the projection matrix. So the projection matrix doesn't even have to be that big. We're going to take the k by n projection matrix. That's sort of the identity looking thing here in the first k by k block. And then it's 0 above and below. And it's just 0 everywhere else. So this is a k by n matrix. And then let's see what the affine property tells us. Well, the affine property, we wrote it up here. Here it is. The affine property told us that if x was normal, and, and it is here with these same parameters even, then ax plus b 
is oh shoot well okay i'm using b for two different things here hopefully that's not confusing this is uh this is some b that we're adding we, we could just erase b here and the same thing would be would be true so we could just erase this and to make this less confusing then ax has the distribution it's a normal with mean a mu and covariance a c a transpose so let's multiply so if we multiply a x and x then then this just by a construction this is just x a and similarly and this by the affine property has distribution normal distribution with mean mu a and covariance a c well i haven't proven that yet so let's let's we'll see what the distribution is going to be it has has mean a mu and that's mu a by the same reasoning here it's just projecting onto the first first k coordinates and it has covariance a c a transpose i guess i could have written that here now oh, we'll, we'll put it in the result a c a transpose and a c a transpose let's remind ourselves what so this is c we decomposed a c a transpose you might be able to if you know your linear algebra you might be able to read it off very quickly if not you can write it down and and verify for yourself or think it through mentally it turns out that this just picks off that upper left k by k block so it's just caa and therefore ax or actually xa has multivariate normal distribution with mean mu a and covariance caa just as we wanted And you can do the same thing for XB. You just project onto the, the, the last N minus K coordinates. So this type of this, this little argument here actually generalizes. You, you can probably see why. Here we were just decomposing it into the first part and the, the second part. But of course you can take any subset of indices. A could be any subset of say k numbers uh, subset of one through n and just project onto those and if you carry this similar type of argument out use a an appropriate projection matrix then you get the same result so of course you know they don't have to be the first k coordinates and they also don't have to be in order and this is super easy to remember. It's super easy to remember what the distribution is by just remembering the affine property, the ever useful affine property. Okay, so that's the marginalization property, just a very nice, the best thing that you could possibly hope for. And next we'll take a look at the, the fact that when we condition on some of, the, uh, some of the dimensions and we look at the distribution on the others, that they are also Gaussian and we can write down what their distribution is. So we'll do that next.